Unveiled today is the tragic and intricate tale of Richard Engelbert, a prosperous real estate agent whose concealed life and secrets culminated in his brutal demise. A resident of Littleton, Colorado, Richard Engelbert was a 48-year-old man. He was a prominent real estate agent, often spotted driving his elegant black car, license plate reading Sexy Realtor, showcasing homes to clients. Married to Wendy, a school principal, he had a stepson named Harrison. With a business degree from the University of Colorado, Richard had over two decades of experience in real estate. The people of Littleton trusted him for his amiable and dependable demeanor. Richard resided in a spacious two-story house with a meticulously maintained lawn. Neighbors frequently saw him working in the yard, greeting them with a warm smile and a wave. He actively participated in local events and charities, sponsoring Little League teams and attending church on Sundays. Richard appeared to lead a perfect life with a beautiful home, a thriving career, and a loving family. Yet Richard harbored a secret life. For the past two years, he had been engaged in a sexual relationship with his stepson, Harrison, fearing exposure would ruin his reputation and career. Additionally, he continued to meet other men for sex through his work, utilizing the homes he showcased as clandestine meeting points. These dual lives generated immense stress and tension for Richard. In the lead-up to his death, Richard was engrossed in work, finalizing deals, and meeting clients. He worked long hours and often returned home late. He anticipated a weekend escape to the Bahamas with Wendy, hoping to unwind and temporarily forget his worries. Richard also planned to attend a 4th of July barbecue at a friend's house, expecting to reconnect with old friends and enjoy a respite from his busy life. Friends described Richard as charismatic and charming, possessing an ability to make people feel at ease and valued. Despite his affable exterior, Richard was deeply disturbed by his hidden life. He felt guilt-ridden about his affair with Harrison and the deceit required to maintain it. He also feared Wendy discovering the truth, potentially shattering their marriage and his community standing. In his final days, Richard was a man besieged by pressure, struggling to reconcile his public image with his private turmoil. His dreams of an ideal life were gradually crumbling, leading to a tragic and violent conclusion. On June 27, 2014, at approximately 3 p.m., Wendy Engelbert returned home earlier than usual from her role as a school principal. She anticipated a tranquil evening, perhaps enjoying some Netflix shows and delving into her favorite book. As she entered their bleak street residence in Littleton, Colorado, all seemed well. Initially, she placed her keys on the kitchen counter and called out for Richard, but silence echoed back. With a growing sense of unease, Wendy decided to inspect the basement, where Richard often retreated to work on his real estate files or indulge in the History Channel. Descending the stairs, she noticed the basement door slightly open, which was unusual. She called his name again, louder this time, yet still received no response. Upon reaching the bottom of the stairs, a horrifying sight awaited her. Richard's lifeless body lay sprawled on the floor, surrounded by evidence of a violent struggle. Bloodstains marred the carpet and furniture, while Richard's face bore bruises and lacerations. A high-end men's belt was tightly wrapped around his neck, evidently used to strangle him. Wendy shrieked in horror and rushed to her husband's side, shaking him and desperately attempting to rouse him, but to no avail. In shock and disbelief, she grabbed her cell phone and dialed 911. Her hands trembled as she spoke to the operator, her voice choking with emotion. My husband is dead. I think he's been murdered, she sobbed, struggling to breathe. The operator tried to calm her and instructed her to stay on the line until the police arrived. Wendy's neighbor, Lucy Johnson, overheard the commotion and rushed over to investigate. She found Wendy sitting on the front steps, weeping inconsolably. Lucy remained with Wendy, trying to comfort her as they awaited the police. Minutes felt like hours, and Wendy's mind whirled with questions about who could have committed this heinous act and why. Upon their arrival, the police swiftly secured the scene and escorted Wendy and Lucy away from the basement. Wendy was in a state of shock, barely able to grasp the reality of what had transpired. She kept repeating, who would do this to Richard? Over and over, her mind unable to fathom the brutal truth of her husband's demise. The discovery of Richard's body sent shockwaves through the peaceful community of Littleton. News of the murder spread rapidly, 
with neighbors and friends gathering outside the Engelbert home, trying to comprehend the tragedy that had befallen their seemingly idyllic neighborhood. On June 27, 2014, at 3.15 p.m., a distressed 911 call from Wendy Engelbert reached the Littleton Police Department. Within minutes, officers arrived at the scene, led by Detective James Cattle, a veteran investigator renowned for his thorough approach. The Engelbert residence on Tranquil Oak Street was swiftly surrounded by police vehicles and yellow crime scene tape cordoned off the area. Upon entering the basement, Detective Cattle and his team encountered a grim tableau. Richard Engelbert's body lay on the floor, a high-end men's belt tightly wrapped around his neck. Bloodstains marked the carpet and adjacent furniture, signaling a violent altercation. Detective Cattle, a keen-eyed man in his late forties with a composed demeanor, surveyed the scene with unwavering resolve. The investigation commenced with evidence collection. Officers photographed the scene from multiple angles, documenting every particular. The belt used in the murder was carefully bagged, and detectives searched for fingerprints and any other clues that might unveil the killer. Detective Cattle noted the disarray of overturned furniture, indicating Richard's struggle for survival. Forensic experts arrived to process the scene, utilizing luminol to detect blood traces and gathering samples for DNA analysis. They scrupulously examined the area for hair fibers and any other potential evidence. The savagery of the murder rattled even the most seasoned officers, yet they remained steadfast in their information-gathering efforts. Detective Cattle interviewed Wendy Engelbert, who was still reeling from the discovery of her husband's body. She recounted her day and the horrifying moment she found Richard, her narrative detailed and emotional. Wendy maintained she had no knowledge of who could have committed the crime, and her alibi was swiftly confirmed as she had been at work during the murder. Next, police canvassed the neighborhood, speaking with residents, including Lucy Johnson, who recounted hearing Wendy's screams and finding her on the front steps, distraught and incomprehensible. Other neighbors mentioned seeing Richard earlier in the day, but noted nothing unusual. Officers also examined Richard's recent phone and email records, uncovering several suspicious messages and calls that suggested illicit sexual encounters with various men. This revelation introduced a new dimension to the investigation hinting at potential motives linked to Richard's secret life. As day turned into night, the police persisted in their work, resolved to find the individual responsible for Richard Engelbert's brutal murder. The scene was cleared, and Detective Cattle and his team reviewed the collected evidence, preparing for the subsequent stages of their investigation. The community of Littleton watched apprehensively, yearning for answers and justice for Richard Engelbert. The prime suspect in Richard Engelbert's murder was his spouse, Wendy Engelbert. A respected school principal in Littleton, the 47-year-old Wendy was renowned for her intellect and strong character. With over 15 years in the school district, she was deeply engaged in community affairs. Colleagues described her as committed and authoritative, always pursuing excellence. On June 28, 2014, the day following the murder, Wendy was brought in for questioning. Detective James Cattle led the interrogation, aiming to reconstruct her actions and emotions. Wendy appeared weary and distressed, yet responded to questions calmly. She recounted her workday and the horrific discovery of Richard's body upon her return home. Despite her composure, Wendy's anger and confusion were palpable. She expressed incredulity and exasperation over the affair, asserting she was unaware of Richard's sexual involvement with other men. The revelation intensified the interrogation as Detective Cattle delved deeper into Wendy's sentiments regarding her husband's infidelity. Detective Cattle inquired about Wendy's relationship with Richard. She acknowledged a robust partnership, but mentioned recent challenges. Wendy insisted she was oblivious to Richard's secret life, attributing her lack of insight to a recent ski injury that impaired her ability to read people's actions. Wendy's alibi was robust. She had been at school all day, attending meetings and preparing for the upcoming academic year. Colleagues and security footage corroborated her presence at work during the time of the murder. Nevertheless, her connection to the victim made her a person of interest. Detective Cattle also examined Wendy's potential motive. Her reputation and career were paramount, both threatened by Richard's affair. However, Wendy vehemently denied any involvement in the murder, maintaining her innocence throughout the questioning. She cooperated fully, providing access to her phone and emails. A thorough search of the Engelbert home yielded no incriminating evidence. 
bolstering her alibi and statements. Still, detectives remain vigilant, cognizant that emotions could drive even the most rational individuals to desperate acts. After several hours of questioning, Wendy was released but remained under scrutiny as the investigation proceeded. Police closely monitored her interactions and movements while exploring other leads. The murder of Richard Engelbert was proving to be an intricate case, with layers of secrets and motives gradually unfurling. The subsequent suspect was Harrison Engelbert, Richard's 21-year-old stepson. A college student and part-time bartender, Harrison had a troubled past marked by stints in rehab and 12-step programs. Despite these obstacles, he was resolved to turn his life around and was pursuing a degree in psychology at a local community college. On June 28, 2014, Harrison was summoned for interrogation. Detective James Cattle, cognizant of the delicate nature of Harrison's bond with Richard, proceeded with care. Harrison seemed anxious yet compliant, eager to divulge his perspective. He confessed to officers his clandestine sexual relationship with his stepfather over the past two years. He described feelings of turmoil, grappling with the deception and secrecy. Harrison disclosed that he had recently terminated the affair upon discovering Richard's infidelity with numerous other men, utilizing properties he showcased as a real estate agent for secret rendezvous. Throughout the interrogation, Harrison conveyed a blend of anger and sorrow. He felt deceived by Richard, not solely due to the affair, but also the lies and manipulation. Despite his bitterness, Harrison asserted he had no intent to harm Richard. He stated he had been working at the bar on the night of the murder, with several witnesses corroborating his alibi. Detective Cattle probed deeper into Harrison's potential motives. The young man's history of emotional distress and substance abuse raised flags, but his recent commitment to sobriety and academic pursuits presented a contrasting image. Harrison was candid about his struggles and his resolve to advance beyond the toxic relationship with Richard. Police scrutinized his electronic devices and social media accounts for any evidence linking him to the crime. They uncovered messages between him and Richard, indicating strain and discord, yet nothing directly incriminating. Harrison's DNA was present at the crime scene, but given his residence in the house, this was anticipated. Harrison's cooperation and steadfast alibi posed challenges for the police in attributing the crime to him. After several hours of questioning, he was released but remained pivotal to the investigation. Law enforcement continued to surveil Harrison's activities and interactions, seeking any discrepancies or fresh evidence that might illuminate his involvement. The intricate dynamics between Richard and Harrison introduced a layer of complexity to the case, leaving Detective Cattle and his team with more queries than resolutions as they delved deeper. They aspired to unearth the truth behind Richard Engelbert's brutal slang. Alexa Hernandez, age 30, emerged as the third suspect in the inquiry. Her history with Richard Engelbert rendered her a person of interest. She had previously discovered Richard engaged in sexual activity with her husband in the bathroom of a house they were touring, culminating in her marriage's dissolution. Renowned for her fiery temper, Alexa had engaged in several altercations with Richard following the incident. On June 29, 2014, Detective James Cattle summoned Alexa for interrogation. A waitress at a bustling local diner, Alexa was known for her forthright nature and indomitable spirit. She entered the interrogation room with a look of defiance, prepared to stand her ground. Detective Cattle commenced by inquiring about her relationship with Richard. Alexa admitted harboring deep resentment towards him for wrecking her marriage and inflicting profound emotional distress. She recounted the day she found her husband and Richard together as the darkest in her life. Post that revelation, she had confronted Richard multiple times, seeking explanations and an apology only to be dismissed. When queried about her location on the day of the murder, Alexa stated she had been working a double shift at a diner named Denny's. She supplied the names of her colleagues who could corroborate her alibi. Detective Cattle contacted the diner and conversed with Alexa's manager, who affirmed her presence at work throughout the day. Numerous co-workers also confirmed citing her during her shifts. Despite her ironclad alibi, Detective Cattle delved deeper into Alexa's potential motives. Her intense animosity towards Richard was palpable, yet she maintained she had moved forward and was focused on reconstructing her life. Alexa disclosed she was attending night classes at a local community college, aspiring to become a social worker 
and assist others who had endured similar ordeals. Law enforcement searched Alexa's residence and vehicle, seeking any evidence that might connect her to the crime. They uncovered nothing dubious or incriminating. Alexa's phone logs and social media activity revealed no communication with Richard in the weeks preceding the murder. Throughout the interrogation, Alexa remained tranquil and collected, despite her evident contempt for Richard. She responded to all questions straightforwardly, exhibiting no indications of guilt or deceit. Detective Cattle acknowledged her cooperation and candor, but recognized the necessity to keep all avenues open. After several hours of questioning, Alexa was released. Police continued to keep tabs on her, cognizant that her history with Richard positioned her as a potential suspect. However, her alibi and the dearth of evidence hindered directly linking her to the crime. The probe into Richard Engelbert's murder grew increasingly intricate with each interview. Undeterred, Detective Cattle and his team were resolved to expose the truth. Nevertheless, the labyrinth of secrets and falsehoods enshrouding Richard's life rendered their mission ever more daunting. They persevered, hoping to discover the crucial piece of evidence that would ultimately unveil the perpetrator. On July 3, 2014, the investigation veered dramatically. Under the scorching summer sun of Littleton, Colorado, with temperatures soaring into the high 80s, Detective James Cattle received a pivotal call from the forensics lab around 10 and a.m. They had uncovered vital new evidence while reassessing items from the crime scene. Among Richard Engelbert's possessions was a concealed camera disguised as a smoke detector installed in the basement. Detective Cattle and his team promptly retrieved the footage, which chronicled the basement's activities over the past few weeks, exposing Richard's clandestine encounters and interactions. Upon reviewing the footage, they discovered a recording from the day of the murder. The video revealed a heated altercation between Richard and his stepson, Harrison Engelbert. The dispute swiftly escalated into a physical struggle. In the footage, Harrison seized a luxury belt from a nearby chair, using it to strangle Richard in a fit of fury. The recording captured the entire incident, providing irrefutable evidence of Harrison's involvement in the murder. Detective Cattle was struck by the brutality and clear motive behind the act, anger and betrayal. Armed with this new evidence, Detective Cattle contacted Harrison, requesting his presence for further questioning. Harrison arrived at the station, oblivious to the video evidence against him. During the interrogation, Cattle confronted him with the footage. Harrison's demeanor shifted instantly. His initial composure gave way to panic and desperation as he realized he had been caught. Harrison crumbled and confessed. He recounted feeling ensnared in the relationship with Richard, manipulated by both his stepfather and his mother, Wendy. The constant deception and in Richard's infidelity had pushed him to his limit. Harrison admitted that in a moment of uncontrollable rage, he had taken Richard's life to liberate himself from the stifling situation. Detective Cattle meticulously documented Harrison's confession, ensuring every detail was recorded. The new evidence, coupled with the confession, left no doubt about Harrison's culpability. The police now possessed a clear understanding of the events culminating in Richard Engelbert's murder and the intricate web of secrets and lies that had enveloped the case. On July 4, 2014, just before noon, the Littleton Police Department took decisive action. With Harrison Engelbert's confession and the incriminating video evidence, Detective James Cattle and his team were poised to arrest him for the murder of Richard Engelbert. Harrison, a 21-year-old college student and part-time bartender, had been grappling with a life of turmoil and confusion. Despite his efforts to overcome his troubled past, the intense emotional strain from his affair with his stepfather and his mother's manipulations had driven him to a breaking point. On the day of the arrest, authorities discovered that Harrison, consumed by feelings of betrayal and manipulation, had slain Richard in a surge of rage. Detective Cattle and several officers arrived at Harrison's residence. Upon knocking, they were greeted by Harrison, his face pale and worn. He was placed in handcuffs and informed of his rights. Harrison appeared resigned, displaying little emotion as he was escorted to the police vehicle. The neighborhood was tranquil, save for a few inquisitive spectators observing the unfolding scene. At the station, Harrison was officially charged with the murder of Richard Engelbert. Detective Cattle conducted a concluding interview to document the particulars of Harrison's confession. Harrison repeated his sentiments of entrapment and manipulation by Richard, 
compounded by pressure from his mother, Wendy. He recounted the events preceding the murder, including the violent dispute that culminated in the lethal assault. Wendy Engelbert, Richard's wife and Harrison's mother, was also summoned for questioning. The investigation had disclosed that Wendy had been aware of the affair for months and had coerced Harrison to maintain it. She feared Richard's reckless sexual conduct would jeopardize her prospects in the impending election for school superintendent. Although Wendy's deception and manipulation complicated the case, she was not directly implicated in the murder and thus avoided criminal charges. Richard's family was left reeling by the disclosures. They had perceived Richard as a devoted spouse and parent, oblivious to his clandestine life. Harrison's arrest evoked a tumult of emotions, sorrow for Richard's demise, anger at the deception, and a sense of tragic inescapability given the circumstances. The community of Littleton was rocked by the revelations as the murder unveiled a concealed realm of secrets and falsehoods, jolting the town to its foundation. As Harrison awaited trial, the Engelbert family and the broader community grappled with the staggering events. Law enforcement had resolved the case, but the emotional reverberations would endure. The truth about Richard's life and death had surfaced, yet the inflicted wounds would require considerable time to mend. On August 15, 2014, the trial of Harrison Engelbert commenced in Littleton, Colorado. The courtroom brimmed with family, friends, and local media, all eager for insights into the case. This legal proceeding captivated the community, garnering attention from both local and national news outlets. Leading the prosecution was District Attorney Laura Mitchell, a 45-year-old renowned for her commanding courtroom demeanor and unwavering commitment to justice. She contended that Harrison's slaying of Richard Engelbert was premeditated, fueled by profound anger and betrayal. Presenting the hidden camera footage in Harrison's confession as crucial evidence, Mitchell stressed that Harrison's actions stem from a tumultuous and volatile relationship, ultimately culminating in his stepfather's brutal death. Representing the defense was non-binary advocate Z. Barnes, a 40-year-old attorney celebrated for their work on high-profile cases. Barnes asserted that Harrison's actions were the consequence of intense emotional turmoil and manipulation by both Richard and his mother, Wendy. They argued that Harrison's fragile mental state and the pressure he endured impaired his ability to control his actions. Barnes pursued a verdict of guilty with consideration for a lesser charge, aiming for a more lenient sentence given the circumstances. Throughout the trial, the victim's family, including Wendy Engelbert and other relatives, sat in quiet distress. The revelations of Richard's double life and the ensuing chaos had left them stunned. Their emotional responses were evident as they listened to the intricacies of the affair and the murder. On September 5, 2014, the jury delivered their verdict. Harrison Engelbert was found guilty of second-degree murder. The jury concluded that while Harrison had acted in a fit of rage, the killing was not premeditated. The verdict elicited mixed reactions. Some deemed it just considering the emotional and psychological elements, while others found it too lenient given the crime's brutality. Harrison received a sentence of 25 years in prison without the possibility of parole. The sentencing offered a sense of resolution to the case, yet the anguish and trauma endured by Richard's family persisted. The Engelbert family grappled with finding solace, knowing that Richard's death had been caused by someone so intimately connected to them. The trial's repercussions extended beyond the courtroom, compelling the community to confront the concealed truths of betrayal and manipulation, and leaving an indelible mark on Littleton. With the case's conclusion, the Engelbert family and Littleton embarked on the arduous journey of healing from the traumatic events that had transpired. As the trial of Harrison Engelbert wrapped up in September 2014, life in Littleton, Colorado, gradually resumed its routine. Yet the case's echoes persisted. The community, profoundly shaken by Richard Engelbert's brutal murder and the subsequent disclosures, confronted a lengthy process of healing and adaptation. Harrison Engelbert, now serving a 25-year prison term, remained incarcerated within the Colorado Department of Corrections. His life behind bars mirrored his external struggles, grappling with his emotions and the repercussions of his actions. In prison, Harrison was reportedly reserved and introspective, dedicating himself to completing his education through available programs. He utilized this time to reflect on his past choices 
and seek counseling for his emotional turmoil. Wendy Engelberg, Richard's wife, faced her own set of challenges. The trial had laid bare her awareness of Richard's infidelity and her manipulative behavior, significantly impacting her personal and professional life. The scandal derailed her candidacy for school superintendent, a position she had meticulously campaigned for. Despite her previous attempts to maintain a flawless image, the revelations forced her withdrawal from the race. Wendy sought to reconstruct her life away from public scrutiny, turning to therapy to cope with the emotional aftermath and address the scandal's impact on her reputation. In the months following the trial, Littleton inched forward, though the case's scars endured. The community organized memorials and support events to honor Richard Engelbert's memory and aid those affected by the crime. The Engelbert family's tragedy served as a stark reminder of the concealed struggles that can exist behind closed doors. As life regained its normal rhythm, the case remained a poignant chapter in Littleton's history, a testament to the profound impact of betrayal and violence on individuals and communities alike. The narrative of Richard Engelbert's murder stands as a tragic reminder of the intricacies and hidden secrets that can lurk beneath the facade of ostensibly perfect lives. It is a tale of manipulation, deception, and the devastating consequences of leading a double life.